Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Now, today we decided to bring you a fantastic special celebrity. Now, this is a young man that has excelled academically with 37 awards to his name, and more recently won by GCI for outstanding academic performance. We have with us someone who's six years, who has over six years of um, experience in the legal industry with three first class degrees to his name, both in Nigeria and outside Nigeria, and currently doing his doctorate in securities law. We have with us Reginald Onoride Aziza. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Thank you so much for Thank joining so much. us. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. So when I look at your profile, your profile is quite intimidating. And I'm asking myself what I was doing when I was growing up, you know, how you have all these awards to you. Is there, is there really a method to this madness that is Reginald? You know, having had these degrees, how does it feel? How did you get to where you were, where you are, right, rather? Um, it's just, for me, it's just work. Um, I, I enjoy studying. I have a passion for it. I would commit um, quite a lot of time every single day, um, irrespective of circumstances, um, to ensure that I add something to myself on a daily basis. Um, when I'm in the peak of my academic mode, I am on over 10 hours of studying every day. Um, push that through over, over a month, two months, six months, 10 months, a year, five years, and you, you just 10 hours of studying a day? Yes. You have a sense of what you can, what you can accomplish, really. Wow, interesting. Now, I was looking through your profile, and I saw that you worked on quite a big case. This was something that was all over the news, Goldman Sachs against the Libyan authorities, okay. and it was everywhere. Yes. Tell us a bit about that. What was that experience like? It was, it was incredible. Um, so it was, it was a massive case, um, 1.2 billion US dollars, and it was, a, it was a financial derivatives litigation, meaning very complex stuff. Um, and, and we had to be before the high courts in, in London. And that was, that was a surreal experience. Because I saw um, Queen's Council um, arguing before the courts um, in, for one and a half court days. And one and a half court days is, um, a court day is seven, seven hours, right? So that's 10 and a half hours of opening submissions. And Queen's Council is standing up and he can go at a go for three hours on his feet arguing and making, making the, the point to the courts, have a short break, continue, continue right there. It's, it's, it, it, it opened my eyes to, to quite a lot, and, and just the, the complexities that were involved, all, all the, the media coverage, everything, it was, it was brilliant. Actually. And that was you practicing law in the UK. You've done law in the UK and in Nigeria as well. What would you say are the differences and the similarities? What, what are the things we need to do better here in Nigeria? Well. I would think I would think we need to we need to open up the space really. Um, I've been a vocal um, critic for a number of things um, happening in the legal profession. So, for example, I, I, I have I have a very strong um, reservation towards the continuation of the wig and gown before the Nigerian courts. I don't think that is something that I think it's something that we can calibrate properly. Indeed, in this um, in this um, Goldman Sachs case, you referred to we're all all in court on suits, for instance. Um, and I've attended hearings where we, we've conducted hearings over the phone, for instance, where the court was sitting in Wales and we're in London and we are making an application to the courts via, via telephone, right? And, and these are things that then make your judicial system, in my opinion, uh, move better. Since you don't spend so much time just going to the courts, take adjournments and pick dates and, and and for, for non-crucial matters, so, so if something's not coming up for, for trial, for instance, um, you really can move quicker if you harness technologies and, and what is, what's available to us right now. It's, it's mind-blowing, and, and I, think, I think if you were to knock back on some of these traditions, then you can infuse a lot of efficiency into the system, in my opinion. Okay, interesting. Now let's speak about black excellence, because this is a topic that is often discussed, especially on social media. Black people do things, and the entire community wants to praise them, because unfortunately, discrimination makes it harder for black people to get to where they want to be, especially in very academic professions. What challenges have you faced? What challenges have you encountered as a black man living in the West that is trying to succeed and become one of the greatest lawyers that the world has ever seen well so far i think i think the the transition has been it's, it's been a very steep learning curve i think um because so taking the, the example of, of this of this um of the submissions i was referring to earlier you're coming from a system where it's, it's perhaps the norm to get into the court and simply adopt what has been prepared and now that is contrasted with a system where you prepared over 200 pages of written arguments. 
and you have 10 hours of presentations. So, so that level of, of, of detail and, uh, and, and, and focus uh, means that you really have to up your game, irrespective. Um, and right now, I'm taking a PhD in security law, like you mentioned, in Oxford. And Oxford is, of course, um, on, on, the, on the university rankings, the Times Higher Education rankings, the best university in the world. It means that um, even for something as complex as securities regulation, you have to take it to another level entirely. So this is my first year, for instance. Um, to understand capital markets law, I've had to read from developmental economics to institutional economics, financial economics, to econometrics, to economic history, almost all economics, to lay a foundation for the law that will come on top of that, right? Um, and and these, are, these are things that you have to learn on the way. Um, um, so in terms of challenges, not, not, not a lot specifically um, in relation to, to being a black person trying to succeed in the West, um, at least that's, that's been my experience. So nothing so like racism, no challenges that are discriminatory that hold you back. I'll tell you why I'm asking, right? right? It's often said about Oxford and Cambridge, and this is why Stormzy just started a new fund to send more black children into Cambridge, That's because right. their statistics showed that the number of black people getting into these prestigious universities was not high enough. And they said, you know what, we need to have some sort of target here because this is extremely unfair. Now, I'm sure, especially if you're on campus, you probably can see the number of black people on campus, right? And right. unfortunately, it is harder in the West for people who are not from the West to actually succeed because of systemic oppression. So I was asking how that has in any way challenged you in your career path. Oh, that's, that's, you, make, you make a very, very, very good point. Um, yes, that's, that, is, that is an issue. Um, and I know that there's been, there's been quite a lot of work going into it. I, I tried to be the president of the, of the Oxford, Africa, um, Oxford University Africa Society last year. And, and I was trying to, one, one of the key points I was trying to push across um, was opened up access. And I think, so, so you have two issues, really. You have the issue of, of getting in in the first place. And having gotten in, there's the issue of funding. And, and funding, like, like you mentioned, people like, like Stormzy, and there, there, there are quite a number of scholarships um, targeted towards um, Africans or towards people of, of, from, from, my, from um, minority um, ethnicities. Um, now, now that, is, that is a problem. And, and we need more access to, to funding. On the, on the side of the, of the admissions, yes, there, there have been complaints, and, and these complaints are very vocal. Uh, when I'm in school, I hear, I, hear, I hear a lot of them, and the Oxford University of Africa Society, for instance, is doing quite a lot. The Cambridge University Societies mm -hmm. are doing quite, quite a lot on that as well. Um, um, on our side as well, I think we have some problems. So I'll give, I give an, an example very quickly. Um, Historically, Cambridge will only admit to its massive law programs, um, first class university graduates. Um, what that means is that you need to, to, if you're coming in from Nigeria, for instance, you need to absolutely get top grades in your undergraduate studies. The problem is that we look at first class degrees in Nigeria now as, as perhaps the, the preserve of the unicorns, such that very few people are able to, to clinch that. And in my time, for instance, I was the only first class graduate university of the Faculty of Law, IFE. In about three years, um, a year before me, I was, the, I was the only first class graduate in my set. A year after me, there was none. And, and that's already structurally limits the number of people who could then apply. And then if you are able to apply, then you have the funding issue. Take the entire thing together. And structurally, absolutely, there are, there are problems that need to be addressed. Um, funding, access, and in terms of access, um, I would say our universities themselves open up the space a lot more to ensure that their graduates are able to come into the world stage and compete. All right. You've mentioned very valid points. And you mentioned something while you were talking about how Nigeria is structured in such a way that we see that having a first class is the absolute preserve of certain unicorns. Now, you've had a first class from OAU. You had a first class from the Nigerian Law School. You had a first class from Cambridge University. Some people have the view that first geniuses, you know, you can't be considered a genius at this point. The geniuses are born and geniuses are not, are not made. But you've also added that you study at some point for 10 hours or even more daily. What would you say has been your propelling force. We find that lots of young people, you know, including me, I've been victims of, a victim of this as well. We find it very difficult to subject ourselves to intense hours of study. At some point, you get bored, you get tired. So what would you say has contributed to you building this habit, this discipline of being able to study for this long? Would you say it came from your upbringing? Would you say something that you just found yourself doing 
you know, from the moment you were born. So people tell you, I started in my mother's womb. So <laughs> how did you start that? How were you able to structure yourself? And are geniuses really born? Um, perhaps I started in my mother's womb because my mom is a professor. Uh, and as such, the, I've always been exposed to an academic environment. Um, um, but, but aside that, um, I'm, I'm an extremely competitive person. And a lot of my academic progress at some point was fought by sibling rivalry. Um, I, have, I have an elder brother who I think is absolutely, is, is heads and shoulders smarter than, than I am, which means that I've had to push myself very far to, to compete with him. And, and uh, of course, we, we got into university and we took different parts. So he studied economics, and of course, he, he made the first course as well um, in economics. I studied law. And getting into that space, I then had to compete to ensure that I remained the best at what, at what I was doing. Um, and as such, this sense of competition is, is, one that, is one that I think has propelled me quite, quite far. It means that I'm, I'm willing to push myself as far as I need to, to consistently be where I want to be. Um, to, to, to the question whether geniuses are born or, or, or made, it's, I, I, what I usually say is that it depends on where you're looking at. Um, if you're looking at at the sciences, for instance, you could have people who are born with incredible, incredible talent. We're looking at art, for instance. Um, you, could have, you could have people who are born with extreme talents. Um, it's not to say that people don't walk to that, but you could have, have, have those as well. But I would usually say that people are not born with the knowledge of law. Uh, they're not born with the ability to argue. They're not born with, with many of these things. And, and so these are skills that are developed in time. I don't imagine you were born with the ability to, either of you was born with the ability to present, for instance. Um, as such, you get to a point where you're able to achieve things um, only through effort. And that happens in some, in, in some um, areas of human endeavor. I would say lawyer will be one, one of them, where you want to be a fantastic lawyer, bury your head down and, and get at it, really. Okay. So now you've gotten married. Congratulations on that. You have Congrats. a beautiful wife. Her name is Kendi Aziza, formerly Kendi Atifulere. And you mentioned earlier that you have been married for, that you read for 10 hours. And I'm wondering, now that you're married, Reginald, how do you plan to share your time with woman and your time with book? Ah, <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's a tricky one. Before you answer that, on your wedding day, you had to jet over to collect your JCI award. That's correct, yes. I had, I had an award from, from, from JCI in Nigeria on my wedding day. How was um, that? It was excellent. Um, so it was, it, was, uh, it, was, it was a James Bond-like move. I had to just sneak out, sneak out of the wedding very quickly. Um, not, not a lot of people noticed I was out. out. Fortunately, the distance between the two venues was, was, quite, was quite short. So got my best man, just uh, we, we drove like maniacs to run down there, get the award, and, and pop back to, to the reception, which was, which was, it, was, it, was it, it made the experience memorable for, for me, really. Um, but in terms of sharing my time, of course, um, I'm, I'm happy to be married to a very understanding person, and, and she understands that when I need to do work, I absolutely need to do work. And, and in, in the point, at the times of courting and, and dating, um, I was able to, to still keep that amount of work going on, even, even in the midst of the relationship. And I had to create what I called um, Kenny time. So it was her time where, where everything is, is shut out and, and attention is fully on her. But when I need to walk, um, she obviously understands that, and unfortunately, she gives me the time to. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. So just very quickly before we round up, what advice would you give to young people who want to go into law, want to study law, and become our future lawyers? Probably with first-class degrees as well. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's a very competitive world. It is. It is absolutely competitive. Um, and you, you will need to put in put in long hours of work, you will need to, you, you need to put in the effort, really. Um, so the simple advice, in my opinion, would be, would be work. Work, 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 and keep working. Um, also network. I, I, think, I think law, specifically, is a, is a relationship-based um, industry where you go as far as the people you have around you. So you need to put yourself out there. You need to, to work hard. And get on your knees and pray, and um, you'll be fine. I believe so, so. Pray, work, and network. Those were Correct. the things I picked away from that. Absolutely. Very quickly before we let you go, what are the projections for the future? Are we going to see you as um, a judge? You know, are you going to be an advocate? What, have you decided what you want to do with all, all this knowledge and all these awards? What career path do you find yourself in the next few years? 
I'll, I think I'll end up in policy. And of course, that's, that's a key point with, with, with the PhD. You, you get to the point where you've acquired a lot of specialist skills and, and you understand how things work and you want to put that into practice. So I'm not, I'm not going to be based in, in England for, for, for all my life. Yes, I, he's coming back home. I'm certain I'm, certain I'm going to be back in, in Nigeria and I'm going okay. to be in the policy space. Um, maybe get, get into politics at, at, the, at, the, at, at some stage. Hmm. But I'm very certain I'm going to be doesn't that sound space. interesting, Leila? That sounds really That's good, really, though. really encouraging. That but thank you so really much good. for joining us. Thank you so, so much. And thank we you wish you all me. the best with what you do. And uh, we wish you, we look, we look forward to seeing the amazing future that lies ahead of you. Of course, you and your beautiful wife, Kendi Aziza. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll head over to the new center. Babake is standing by. How can people follow you on social media? If they need counseling, mentorship, and they need to ask questions. Um, Facebook, Reginald Aziza. Instagram, at Reginald Aziza. Twitter, at Reginald Aziza. All right. So, to enjoy more of this our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.